Welcome to my multi-part series on post-production workflow. Right now we're in Capture One, which I use to capture the images when I'm tethered to my camera on site. I also use it to do my, my raw processing. And what I've done here is I've shot a number of different gray card images. I shot this one is for the ambient light. This one is for direct flash. And this one is for bounce, because I can't account for what color these walls and ceilings are. So I did another one where I bounced the light off the ceiling and onto the gray card. So we're going to go and save custom white balances for each of these. So when we do our compositing later on, everything's going to match up color-wise really nice. So I'm going to zoom in here a little bit. I'm going to hit W for my white balance tool. And I'm going to just click the gray. You see that got us pretty close right there. Now what I could do in Capture One is I can go up here to Presets and I can say Save Custom Preset. And I'm going to save this. I'm going to call it Ambient. So now that's in my list where if I have to go and apply that to another ambient color image, it'll be right there in a drop down and I know they're all the same. I'm going to go through it to my direct flash, do the same thing. I'm going to click on the gray. Save custom preset as, I'll call that direct because that's a direct flash. And then we'll go over here and do the same thing with the bounce. And save that as bounce. So now I have these three different color settings saved. So what I could do now is go to my images, which I have pulled aside here. I shot seven images of this of this particular view. One is what I think would be a pretty decent ambient shot and I like to get my outsides looking about one stop overexposed. I think it looks more natural. So that was shot at a 15th of a second at f11. I'm at ISO 100. The next shot I shot is two stops over. I like to shoot these overexposed ones to get the very darkest of the shadows to show up. And in this case, this metal work here, I didn't want that to just become a black hole. So I have those. And what I'm going to do here now is if I go back to my white balance, actually I'll select both of those. Back to the white balance, make sure they're both set to ambient. So they'll both be balanced to ambient. And then I have some other lighting layers. So that's a that looks like a bounce flash there. Some more bounce flash wherever I saw dark places. So I'm going to select all those. And I'm going to go here and I'm going to say, tell it this is what bounce looks like here in this case. So I'm going to go back to these ambience and I'm going to make one other adjustment here. These are some controls to account for and uh, adjust shadows and highlights, which I like to adjust. So highlights here in this case don't look too bad, but I might want to bring them down just a little bit to try to eliminate some of the fuzziness in the light sources here. And shadows, I'm going to bring up just a little bit, not too much. This room wasn't really very contrasty. Sometimes you'll go into other interior spaces where it's much more contrasty, where there's much darker corners and maybe floors are too dark. And you could jack them up a little bit there. I'm going to do this and I'm going to copy this over to the other image. I want to copy the exposure settings that I just saved and hit apply. So now I have all seven of these images that I want to bring over into Photoshop. Now I'm ready to do my compositing. So I'm going to export and I have some 
recipes here. The one we're going to use is just a regular TIFF. 8-bit TIFF is fine. I'm shooting in 16-bit, but they I don't really see any kind of benefit in in um, sh transferring them over and saving them as 16-bit TIFFs because it just makes it really, really huge file. So we're going to export these. And we're going to come back later in Photoshop.